quality of the musicians that worked with Frank is apparent. You can just tell, even from the four drummers that I know that I've worked with in the studios, Ralph Humphreys, and then there was Terry Bozio, and then, of course, Vinnie Caliuta and Chad Wackerman. I mean, these are probably four of the currently best drummers in the world. Being a percussionist, I was very interested in the way he wrote rhythmically. And Frank definitely wrote wonderful, wonderful rhythms that came from India, Africa, everywhere but America. I'm stressing rhythm because he really impressed me rhythmically, the things that he wrote rhythmically. I mean, the tempo would be here, one, two, three, four. One, three, four, five, seven, eight, ten, twelve. I only put 12 in a beat. He would put 17 notes in one beat, you know? I mean, he just had wild and, and accenting, different accents for those beats. And when you look at it, say, oh, I don't know, that's impossible. Boom, he would play it for you so you could hear him play it, you know? The rhythms were just always the, the key elements that... Uh that made it really stand out. I mean, you ask any drummer who ever tried to play the Black Page, you know, I mean, again, there's like a handful of guys who can do it. And the ones who were able to do it played in Frank's band, you know, and he would audition them. You know, it's called the Black Page for a reason because there's so many notes. <laughs> was going to get the gig and somehow got the gig. So uh, the music was more difficult. I was familiar with the concepts of, uh, you know, these uh, superimposed odd rhythms over time, like five over three or this kind of thing uh, from school. But uh, I had never seen it to that level of difficulty, that much of it being used, because uh, it was sort of a trademark of Frank. <laughs> Maybe a year later, he walked into rehearsal one day. He had a very deep voice, you know, he said, what do you think about this, Bozio? And he, he handed me this sheet, and it said, the black page. And, and it was uh, written from my drum set. And, you know, Frank was uh, a drummer to begin with. So we always had this little affinity that way, you know, r rhythmically. night uh, when we finished rehearsals and I was still playing just working on these last couple bars and I, I finished the piece and just happened to nail it you know and um, and he said Bozio you're a fucking genius and I'll never forget that <laughs> very successful doing that you know working with the right people knowing the techniques himself on how to, to make these things sound the way that they did but the funny thing is he had a quote uh, where he said um, the one thing he excels at is failure and I think you know I understand why he said it and it, what it was is that he never got things to be exactly as he wanted but they're already at such a high level. So the level that he was thinking is probably unattainable.
Ladies and gentlemen, there is a melody to this song. And I'm going to invite one of the world's best guitar players to come and join me on the melody for the Black Page number two. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Steve Vibe. I remember when I first heard the Black Page, I was stunned. I just had no idea that, um, I've never heard anything like it. I don't think there was ever anything written like it. That's the thing. And the way that he presented it in such a nonchalant format as the Live in New York concert, I mean, you know, how dare he write a historical piece of music and make fun of it? You know, in a way, and I remember hearing it and thinking, I have to play this piece of music. I have to understand what it is. occasionally to come up to the house and jam and I lived right down the street so sometimes I would be up there and we'd just be playing together and he would come up with things and occasionally he'd show things and occasionally we would just jam but this one night he came up with this little piece of music that he showed me and it went like this he said just remember that I said, okay. And to me, it was like a little treasure, you know, so I remembered it. And then months later, I was up at the house again, and I said, do you remember that piece of music you showed me? And he said, no. And I said, well, when I played it for him, he goes, oh, okay, well, here's another part for it. And then, uh... Months passed, and I was up at the house again, and I said, do you remember those two pieces of music you showed me? And he's like, you know, yeah. I said, well, and he showed me another part. <laughs> 